There was a lot of talk over the weekend about how the Trump administration has fared during its first 100 days. But now, let's take a look at what Democrats have achieved over that same period. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer has steadfastly refused to negotiate or compromise with the administration in any way. In a bold statement of principle, Schumer told reporters, quote, I won't, I won't, I won't, no, 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 you can't make me, you're not the boss of me, I won't, I won't, I won't, unquote. Schumer then lay down on his stomach and pounded his fists against the floor while drumming his feet and saying he didn't want to go to bed and it wasn't fair because the Republicans got to stay up late and watch all the good television shows. Schumer finally calmed down when George Soros gave him a big fuzzy check, which he rubbed against his face with one hand while sucking the thumb of the other. He's been napping quietly ever since. On the House side, Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi has had a very productive 100 days. In a speech she made to a potted plant while applying lipstick to her forehead, Pelosi said, quote, President Obama or President Trump, whichever one is the one I'm not supposed to like, has done many stupid things like trying to create jobs when everyone knows that unemployment is the greatest driver of the economy in Peru or whatever country this happens to be. That's why we have to pass a bill to find out what's in it, or vice versa, depending on who's in office, what was I saying, who am I, unquote. Mrs. Pelosi then swiveled on her heel and strode proudly away until she smacked into the wall, stumbled backwards, tripped over a chair, slid across the floor into the hall, and went bumpity-bump down the stairs on her backside until she flew out the front door. At that point, she remarked, quote, boy, that hasn't happened to me since Thursday, unless this is Thursday, unquote. Hillary Clinton spent the last 100 days making important policy speeches, submitting a budget to Congress, and ordering military intervention in Libya until friends explained to her once again that she had in fact lost the election, whereupon she began to whimper quietly and was gently escorted back to bed. And of course, former President Barack, what's his name, spent the first 100 days of the Trump administration yachting with billionaire friends and collecting exorbitant speaking fees to address Wall Street bankers. Former President Obama was overheard telling anyone who would listen, quote, I do think at a certain point you've made enough money, but damned if I can figure out when that is. Personally for me, I'm thinking it'll be about the time I can ski down a mountain of gold coins and hundred dollar bills like Scrooge McDuck while shouting, I care about the poor, ha 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 ha, unquote. So all in all, it hasn't been a great hundred days for the Democrats, but then think how much worse it would be if they actually were in power. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven Show. I feel hunky dunky. Life is tickety boo. Birds are winging, also singing, hunky dunky doo. Ship shaped, tipsy topsy. The world is a pity zing. It's a wonderful day. Hurrah, hooray! It makes me want to sing. Oh, hurrah, hooray! Oh, hooray, hurrah! Hooray! The Clavenless weekend is over, and you know what that means. It means the president of all trolls, Michael Knowles, our cultural correspondent, has been helicoptered here from his Fox and Friends hit that <laughs> he was on. You know, I mean, he's descended to being on our show again, and he will be uh, talking with us about the culture. You know, when you see, you know, people like Knowles and the other people who are on the show, I, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why doesn't he use ZipRecruiter.com, you know? <laughs> surely, surely just standing out on the street saying, want to do a radio show is not the way to bring people into your staff. With ZipRecruiter, if you want the perfect hire, see, what you got to do is you got to post your job on all the top job sites. And now you can with ZipRecruiter.com. You can post your job to 200 plus job sites, including social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. You can find candidates in any city, any industry, nationwide. You just post once and watch your qualified candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy to use interface. I almost burst into tears when I read this, when I think of the people I could have had working here if I had only used ZipRecruiter.com. It's been used by Fortune 100 companies and thousands of small and medium-sized businesses and right now, the people who are painfully listening to the show can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. It's free. I mean, they're giving it away. You just go there. You press ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. All one word, all together. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. One more time, to try it for free, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Don't let this happen to you. All right. You know, over the weekend... Donald Trump defended the Second Amendment, stood in front of the NRA, who are th justifiably thrilled, right, 
with what he has done with by appointing Gorsuch to the Supreme Court and uh, Jeff Sessions as Attorney General. He made he made fun of the press. Well, that's what we're going to got to talk about, what he did to the press. He appointed a pro-life advocate to a top communications post at Health and Human Services, and he announced they're going to get rid of Michelle Obama's idiotic school lunch standard. So it was like a good, it was actually a pretty good, glamorous weekend. You know, if if Donald Trump had done nothing else in his first hundred days but expose the news media for what it is, for the fact that they are a bunch of, de- that they are a Democrat Pravda, you know, that they are just a one party, one party operatives with press cards, it, it would be, it would be worth it. It would be worth it. You know, I mean, well, the, the jury is out on legislation, on health care and tax reform, may pull it off. I think he might. We don't know how good it'll be when it comes, but You know, just this thing he has done to this dishonest press. The White House correspondents had their big dinner, and he didn't show up. Trump didn't show up, which is what they do every year. And so, you know, usually the president shows up, and he makes fun of them, and they make fun of him. Except if it's Obama, they really don't make fun of him, and Obama, you know, kind of— is is coddles them, whereas if it's George W. Bush or Donald Trump, they rip him to pieces. They rip him to pieces. So Trump said— Screw it. I'm not going to show up. So just to compare, just so we can compare for a minute. Here is Trump uh, on number cut five. Here's Trump at his enormous rally in Pennsylvania where he was celebrating his first hundred days. Here's him talking about the media. Media outlets like CNN and MSNBC are fake news. Fake news. And they're sitting and they're wishing in Washington. They're watching right now. They're watching. And they would love to be with us right here tonight. But they're trapped at the dinner, which will be very, very boring. But next year, maybe we'll make it more exciting for them in Washington and will show up. But we have a good chance of showing up here again next year, too. <laughs> so he's having fun, the people are having fun. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the press is in this dingy little room being broadcast on C-SPAN, right? And they've got this comedian, Hassan Minhaj, right? And I guess that's to show how, how tolerant we are of Muslims. Unfortunately, they didn't tell them about the Quranic uh, rule that you can't be funny because Hassan Minhaj was like a completely laugh-free performance. Here's just a clip. We got to address the elephant that's not in the room. (laughs) The leader of our country is not here. And that's because he lives in Moscow. It is a very long flight. It'd be hard for Vlad to make it. Vlad can't just make it on a Saturday. It's a Saturday. As for the other guy, I think he's in Pennsylvania because he can't take a joke. Now, for the nine people watching on C-SPAN, they're also was another elephant in the room, but Donald Trump Jr. shot it and cut off its tail. Guy, I mean, it really, it, Samantha Bee did her alternative uh, White House correspondence dinner, and that was, all, she is like completely unfunny. Also, she's from Canada. Why are all these late, there's a British guy on late yeah. night TV, all, all of them come here and criticize our president. You know, it's like, go away, go home, and we don't need you. Anyway, she was unfunny. Trump was hilarious. Trump was having a great time. My favorite part of the media White House dinner. So now the media is, it, they've been completely marginalized. Now I'm not going to say, I've just decided, by the way, just as a, as a production note, I'm no longer using media as a plural anymore. I've always been really careful to always say the media are and all this stuff, but I realize that the media has now become a collective noun, like parliament or congress, right? And in the, the British would say, even when they use a collective noun, they say parliament are sitting because I think they really just do it to mess with us, but that's, that, that is the way what we use uh, single verbs for collective nouns. So I'm just going to say the media is from now on. And if I, you know, I, I guess I'm just sick of it. I'm, damn, I'm sick and tired of it. Now I do a really good conservative. I'm sick and tired of our media. Anyway, so what I love is the media is now the, the poor little victims, right? Because they're all leftists, and leftists have to be victims. So the, the president of the White House Correspondent Association, Jeff Mason, gets up, and he, he wants to say that we're not what that mean Trump says we are. Okay, this is cut three. We are not fake news. We are not 
failing news organizations. And we are not the enemy of the American people. Well, I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. Wow, it's, it's, it's almost like the press has turned into Richard Nixon. It's like the press. Richard Nixon used to cover up. Now the press covers up. Richard Nixon lied. Now it's the press who lied. You know, it's amazing the way they just, he just transformed right in front of our face. I think the lesson from Richard Nixon is when you got to tell people that you're not a liar, you might be a liar. <laughs> you might be a liar. I mean, if these guys are not in a bubble, and I know I've said this before, but it is worth repeating, the chief journalist at ABC is George Snyder. Snuffleupagus, the guy from Suckleupagus, the guy from who told Hillary Clinton, "I love you, Hillary." This is a Clinton operative, right? The president of CBS News is David Rhodes, brother of Ben Rhodes from the uh, Obama administration. Comcast, which owns NBC, is run by a major Democratic donor. So is CBS. Time. So is Time Warner, which owns CNN. I mean, these guys. If these guys aren't in a bubble, Instapundit, one of my favorite sites, uh, Glenn Reynolds, pu- published today, republished today, a an article from October 2016, okay? October 2016 is less than a month away from the last election, right? Am I right about it? Yes. Here's the article. Hillary Clinton is so far ahead of Donald Trump in the race for the presidency that she no longer even feels the need to pay attention to the Republican nominee. Buoyed by a double-digit lead in some national polls, Mrs. Clinton has said she is now looking past Mr. Trump entirely and will no longer counter allegations by her rival. I don't even think about responding to him anymore, Mrs. Clinton said when asked about Mr. Trump's charge that American media outlets are in cahoots with her presidential campaign. I don't even think about it anymore. I'm so far ahead. I read it in the newspaper. These guys are living in a complete bubble. So now they have to be the sad little victims, and our First Amendment rights are terribly, terribly under attack. Here is the other part of Mason's spiel, basically, where he gets up and says, oh, you know, we are here to defend this embattled press. An attack on any of us is an attack on all of us. At previous dinners... We have rightly talked about the threats to press freedoms abroad. Tonight, we must recognize that there are threats to press freedoms here in the United States. We must remain vigilant. The world is watching. What threats? What th- I mean, be specific. What threats? That Trump calls you a liar when you lie? What threats? This is the fantasy world of the left, and this is, it's, it is, it's huge. It's huge. The fantasy world, they are living in a complete fantasy. Here, I got to give a hat tip to Jazz Shaw of Hot Air, who's great. Uh, Hot Air is great, and Jazz Shaw is terrific. But he pointed this out. Reince Priebus goes on uh, the Jonathan Carl show on ABC. And they're going to bring on Ann Coulter later to talk about free speech. And Carl says, well, you know, in keeping with this, let's talk about the terrible threats from Donald Trump to free speech. Here's Reince Priebus. Of course, there's a big controversy at Berkeley over freedom of speech. I want to ask you about two things the president has said on related issues. First of all, there was what he said about opening up the libel laws, uh, tweeting, the failing New York Times has disgraced the media world, gotten me wrong for two solid years, change the libel laws. That would require, as I understand it, a constitutional amendment. Is he really going to pursue that? Is that something he wants to pursue? I think it's something that we've looked at um, and how that gets executed or whether that goes anywhere is a different story. But when you have articles uh, out there that have no basis or fact and we're sitting here on 24-7 cable uh, companies writing stories about constant contacts with Russia and all these other matters. So you think the president should be able to sue the New York Times for stories he doesn't like? I I I think that newspapers and news agencies need to be more responsible with how they report the news. Okay. Okay, now here is Talking Points Memo, a left-wing site, Josh Marshall. Priebus, Trump considering amending or abolishing First Amendment. That's the headline. Trump is considering... Off the, first, first of all, it was Jonathan Carl who said that we would have to change the First Amendment to ch- pass a law. 
You never have to change any amendment to pass a law. You can pass a law saying the president can sue the New York Times for libel, and the Supreme Court can say, no, that's not in keeping with the First Amendment. That would ha be how that works, okay? So you don't have to, there's no amending the First Amendment. No one was ever talking about that except Jonathan Carl, because Jonathan Carl is living in the fantasy of the press, okay? So then, then you go on with this, and he says, Carl says accurately that that kind of clampdown on First Amendment rights would require amending the Constitution. It's not accurate, okay? And one might respond to this saying, okay, technically, that's what he said, but he probably actually didn't mean it. You know, I mean, this is the great threat that they're under, that, that Donald Trump has basically accused them of being Democrat, the Democrat Pravda when they are. This is the terrible, terrible threat. But... But there, there's a really interesting piece in the Chicago Tribune. I'm going to have to say goodbye to Facebook and YouTube, which means you're going to miss the president of all trolls. This is not just any troll that we're bringing you. Michael Knowles has been elected by all the little trolls with their hair coming out. They all got together and said, we elect Michael Knowles to be the president of all the trolls. And he's going to be with us on the dailywire.com. If you come to the site, you can see it all, and especially if you subscribe, which you should. Just paint it.